Am I hearing you wrong? Will you say it again? My husband, who has looked down on me because he makes more money than me, is now on his knees in front of me. I love her. I've never felt this way before. I want you to leave me. I will give you custody. In fact, we are going to have a baby, and I want her to give birth safely. So will you get out of my house this month? He says this with sparkling eyes, but what he's saying is disgusting. Okay, here are the divorce papers. I will only take the younger girls. I don't know about that other kid. I said in a calm voice. Take our eldest daughter with you. He was really insisting. I don't want to do that because she is. My name is Irene. I'm 45 years old. I have a husband, Tommy. Who is the same age as me and three girls. The oldest is 20 years old, and the younger girls are in the fifth and fourth grades. I work full time as an office worker. I work early in the morning and still prepare dinner even on the days I come home late. Good morning, Mom. My elementary school kids wake up by themselves, but my husband is not a morning person. And doesn't wake up easily, even if I call out to him. Hey, why didn't you wake me up? After a while, my husband wakes up with a grumpy look on his face. You're not a child. You should wake up by yourself. I tell him coldly. If I'm late, it's your fault. My husband raises his voice. What are you talking about? It's your fault, isn't it? When my daughter blurts out a good argument, my husband's face turns red. How dare you talk back to your parents? Oh, shut up. He's always like this when he's not in a good mood. I grumble to myself. Oh, we're going to be late if we don't get out of here soon, won't we? My husband clicks his tongue at my words and rushes out of the house. This is a scene every morning in our house, and there is another problem. Micah, are you awake? If you don't get ready soon, you'll be late for work. I called out to my oldest daughter, Micah, through the door. Shut up! I quit work yesterday! Go away! I heard a noise from inside the room, as if she was throwing something at the door. Micah has a temper. After graduating from high school, she got a job, but it didn't last long and she quit. They moved from one job to another. As for the reason for her resignation, she said that she felt excluded and the colleagues talk about her behind her back. She didn't listen to what I had to say. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. She would apologize like that, but made fun of me. When it turned out that she had been lining her own pocket by selling my younger daughter's personal belongings without their permission, I thought they were trash, so I got rid of them. When she said that with a smirk on her face, I was so angry that I almost hit her. When the next phone bill exceeded 500 bucks, I scolded her. Do you think money grows on trees? If you want to play, you should go work. Micah seems to feel bad about it, and she was silent and sulking. And then my husband came home from work and said, Hey, don't yell at her like that. Don't you feel sorry for Micah? I make most of the money in this house anyway. If we are having a hard time making ends meet, it's because of your poor management of the family. He looked down on me and laughed. It's your constant pampering that's ruining it. Shut up! Didn't you hear what Dad said? I'm trying to get some rest and relaxing. You are always whining. Don't act like you're my mother. Micah glared at me sharply and went back to her room. Look, I can't do this anymore. I can't deal with her. Neither can you. You come home late. You don't do anything at home. Is earning money your only duty as a father? My husband sighs at the sight of me. Isn't it a mother's job to take care of the children? I feel bad about Micah too, but what can I do? He said this to me without any apology. 
Hey, you are coming home late every day these days. You are not cheating on me, are you? My husband's face scrunched up a little at my words. So this is about a friend of mine who has a wife and child and has fallen in love with another woman. I'm trying to help him with that. What would you do, by the way? Well, I don't know. I would talk to the cheater first, see how serious she is, and then make a decision. I think it's best to start talking as soon as possible. I see. I guess so. After mumbling to himself, he went into the bedroom. I took out my phone and made a call to someone. It was the next evening. I wonder if I'm deaf. Could you repeat that? In front of me was my husband, who usually looks down on me in a big way, and a young woman who is standing by him, looking at me with a slightly smug look on her face. This woman, Jill, works for my husband, and is 20 years old like Micah. I like her. I never felt this way before. I want you to leave me. I will give you custody. In fact, Jill is going to have a baby, and I want her to have it in peace. So I want you to out of my house by the end of this month. He looked at me with sparkling eyes like a boy who had found his first love, yet said the worst words ever. Give up the custody? You just didn't want it. Since I kept quiet, Jill, the cheating partner, immediately talked to me. I'm indebted to you. Tommy loves me more than he loves you, though. Looks like your marriage has not been going well for a long time. Then please give him to me. Jill giggled. You said so yesterday. You said you will make a decision after you hear what the other person has to say. Jill loves me, and of course I love her. I'm begging you. Will you break up with me? I was annoyed by the atmosphere. As if I was the bad guy tearing them apart, I stood up quickly and came back with something. Okay, here are the divorce papers. I will only take the younger girls. I don't know anything about that other kid. I said calmly, but my husband was extremely furious. Why? Take Michael with you. In short, he wants to spend a happy newly wedded life with his young wife. Leaving everything else to me as before. How can I allow such a thing? I don't want to do that. She is not the one I carried in my belly. Since we are getting divorced, she is Micah's mother from now on, isn't she? She snickered at me. What? I don't know anything about that. Tommy, you said you will leave the kids to your wife. I don't want to take care of the kids. I don't know how to deal with elementary school kids. Jill, who had looked so relaxed earlier, suddenly became impatient. My husband looked troubled. Huh? Elementary school kids? What are you talking about? The one you are going to take care of is a 20-year-old woman just like you. I? Huh? Jill's surprised face at that time was so funny. But I can't help laughing when I remember it now. Actually, Micah is not my child. Three years ago, Micah came to our house with a big baggage. Um, who are you? I'm here to see my dad. It should be okay, so just let me in. She said to me with the same forceful attitude she has now. I immediately called my husband, and when I told him, no way. You are kidding, right? He had an illegitimate child. He had a child with a woman he had a relationship with before he met me, and he gave her a sum of money as child support without acknowledging her. Her mother passed away, and none of her relatives took Micah in. She must have had an attitude problem. One of the relatives tried to find her real father, my husband, and so Micah came to our house. At the time, my children were in the early grades of elementary school, and I didn't know how to explain the sudden appearance of a half sister. Naturally, I refused to take Micah in. Then my husband got down on his knees, as he is doing now. Please, 
just for a little while. When she graduates from high school, of course I will let her leave. Just until then, please. I just watched my pathetic husband. Micah was a sophomore in high school at that time. I reluctantly agreed. I explained to the younger children that she was my husband's relative. At first, she was reserved. As time went by, Micah became arrogant to me and my daughters. She looked just like my husband, and I felt that she was really his child. Micah was sleeping on a mattress on the floor, but then, I want my own room. When she told my husband this, he told me he had no choice but to give my younger daughter's room to Micah. And so, my two daughters shared a room with each other. Naturally, I was furious, but my husband said, It's only for a little while, right? She's leaving next year anyway. After Micah graduated from high school, she stayed at home and showed no sign of leaving. Furthermore, my husband suggested to me to treat Micah as my eldest daughter. At this point, my heart was filled with a desire to divorce my husband. I guess I had already made up my mind when I found out that he had an illegitimate child. My husband had spoiled Micah, who was causing problems without even facing them. If discipline is a role of a parent, then it is my husband's role to discipline Micah. It is none of my business. I increased my working hours from part-time to full-time as soon as I took Micah in order to get our lives on a more stable footing. When I had some stability in my income and found a place to live with my daughters, I found out that my husband was cheating on me. The thought of my husband divorcing me without me knowing anything about it and living a comfortable married life with his new partner ignited my desire for revenge. I snickered at their ugly argument in front of me and snatched away the divorce papers filled out by my husband. Well then, I will leave this house as you wish. The house still has a mortgage and you will each pay me alimony from now on, right? Oh, of course, and child support. Jill, you're in a lot of trouble. This old man will be 60 in less than 20 years. You're gonna be working hard to support him. That's great. I admire so much. Ju blushed when I smiled at her. What are you talking about? That's not what you told me, Tommy. You asked me to be a stay-at-home wife when we got married, didn't you? Well, that's... His reply irritated Jill even more. Oh, really? That's even harder. This old man doesn't help me with the housework at all. Oh, and he can't get up by himself in the morning, so you have to wake him up. And of course, he won't take care of the kids, so you will be on your own. Jill was starting to get nervous about the consequences of her future as I spoke cheerfully. I felt sad as I was talking. My husband had not been like this from the beginning. He had done a good job of sharing the housework and childcare with me when we were first married. However, as he got promoted, he started to one-up me because he was earning more. And to top it all off, he has an unruly illegitimate child named Micah. What in the world is the reason for not divorcing? I have no money for alimony. What am I going to do? I'm about to have a baby. Don't you feel sorry for me? Well, I feel sorry for the baby in your belly. To have a woman who can't even say a single word of apology for destroying someone's family as a mother, and to have a stupid man as a father who thinks that the only role of a father is to make money. I said to them in a calm manner, and they turned red in the face. Jill, don't worry about the money. I didn't tell her this, but I actually have a good amount of money saved up from my bachelor days. So there is no need to worry about the money. Jill's face lit up instantly. She looked at me as if to say, Hey, I won. Oh, I see. Oh, I thought I saw Micah rummaging through your wallet a little while ago. I think it was a credit card. My husband's face turned pale, 
As I made a deliberate pretense of thinking, he rushed to Micah's room. Hey, you didn't. Micah seems to have overheard our discussion from her room. Well, I borrowed some money. I don't know the total amount, but maybe about 2,000 bucks this month. Micah laughs bitterly, but soon turns the tables on him and says, But I don't have a choice. I'm in the middle of recharging my batteries, so it's your fault for being stingy and not giving me an allowance. Jill, the cheating partner looked at the arguing father and daughter with a tense expression on her face. I was standing behind her. Isn't she an energetic girl? I couldn't even handle her. Good luck, her new mom. Oh, and don't forget the alimony. Jill fell to her knees and started waiting. I left her there without a word and walked out of the house feeling light. Thanks for waiting. Let's go back to our new home. My daughters came running up to me with smiles on their faces. Are you okay? My friend, who I had asked to watch over my daughters, was worried about me. It was a big win. I gave a peace sign and high-fived my friend. This is my friend's story, he said. Wouldn't anyone think 80% of the story is about himself? I was struggling to hold back my laughter. The night before my husband told me the story, and I realized it, so I asked my friends to take care of my daughters for me. I laughed at my husband who really brought his girlfriend. I was preparing to leave home to get a divorce from my husband. The contract for the new house had been signed a few days before, and most of the belongings had been moved out. My husband, who is indifferent to our family, was not even aware of this. A few days later, I was contacted by both of them through my lawyer. Your husband is demanding a reduction in the amount, and the cheating partner says that the relationship with your husband is untrue. I submitted a new audio recording of the discussion. Then I started ignoring their calls, so I sent a certified letter to their workplaces and the cheater's parents' house. They seemed to have given up, and the amount of money I had requested was transferred later. The next month, my husband and Micah appeared in front of me on my way home from work. Irene, please come home. I was wrong. You're all I've got. You're still mad at me, aren't you? Can you forgive me for this? Come home, Mom. Dad expect me to do all the chores. They had tears in their eyes. You're both trying to sell me something I don't want to buy. It's pretty disgusting. So you'd better stop. I'm not angry. Oh, I don't have any feelings for you at all. You know, isn't that young wife with you today? My husband looked down as I looked around deliberately. Oh, and who is your mother? Do you mean me? I have only two daughters. You're not my daughter. Micah, aren't you the one who told me not to act like your mother? You don't like this. You don't like that. Get a grip. I scolded Micah like this over and over again. Micah was the one who rejected me. And in my own way, I've done my best to deal with her even if she was not my own child. But that is over now. Now that we are divorced, these two are completely strangers to me. If they come again, I will call the police without hesitation. Of course, because they are outsiders now. They run away from me as if they panicked at the word please. I thought that they looked just like each other, and their thoughtless personality were just like a father and child indeed. Incidentally, I knew from my lawyer that Jill and Tommy had broken up soon after that. It turned out that Jill's pregnancy was also a crazy story, and that they had been making a joint effort to avoid my demand for alimony, thinking that I might feel sorry for them if they told me so. Anyways, they told their lawyer that their love was pure. I don't understand what kind of mind she has at all, but maybe my ex-husband, who became a head of the department at a young age, looked good to her. However, 
it turns out that the man is no better than a schoolboy who can't even get up in the morning by himself. She should be thankful to me that she found that out before they got married. By the way, I found out about the affair from my ex husband's subordinate, whom I met by chance at the supermarket. He is very close to one of his subordinates, and there are some rumors about it in the company. I thought if it was really okay, because their age gap was like a father and child, but. I didn't have any doubt in my mind to trust my ex husband after hearing such a rumor. My ex husband was demoted, and Jill, the cheater, resigned from her job out of embarrassment. Jill seems to have borrowed money from her parents to pay the alimony, and now she is working from morning till night under their watchful eyes. She seems to have been thinking of an elegant life as a housewife married to my ex husband. Who owns a house and is a department manager? But such a life is a dream. She must have learned the harshness of reality the hard way. Don't underestimate life, you little girl. The stupid father and daughter is still living in that house, but they have been fighting every day. And when it got worse, the neighbors have called the police. I think Micah is just frustrated. Though my ex husband seems to be doing fatherly things. I'm sure the house is in shambles, but it doesn't matter to me. 20 year olds are usually considered adults. You can't stay a child forever. I hope they have a hard time from now on. And as for me, thank you for everything, Mom. I blush with embarrassment, and my daughters give me a handkerchief. It was the same handkerchief that Micah had sold without permission, and that they had given to me on Mother's Day a long time ago. My parents are gone, and I don't have many relatives to rely on. But I have many friends and such kind daughters. I'm a very blessed person just because of that. Thinking of this, I smiled and said thank you.